Hello and welcome to another SCARDV tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use loops in SCAR. Now I said I was going to do this in the last tutorial but I kind of ran out of time there so um, it'll be this one. So first of all the uh, loop you're going to well probably use most often is the for loop. So that's what I'm going to show you first. So we're going to need a integer variable for this. Well, any variable actually that can store a, a uh, numeric value, but you know, integer is the most commonly used one. And we're going to set up the for loop. So basically it's very simple. You um, have to specify a variable which you can use to, uh, to loop with. Aside from that, you also want a, uh, a beginning value and an ending value. So in this case, we're going to uh, try for i equals so for a value starting from one to another value five. So for every value starting from one to five, do the following. So we're going to tell it to write out the i. Now if you run this. We will get one, two, three, four, five written in the debug box. Now, um, this is basically what a loop does. So it goes through, uh, well, it, it runs the segment of code here in the, uh, in the block it represents as many times as you require it. So, in the case of a for loop, you just loop through a uh, set of numbers. So if it changes, for example, to four, we'll loop from one to four. You can also say, for example, for uh, minus one to four do, we'll loop from minus one to four. Also, if you want to loop down, for example, for, from uh, four to one, you have to say for i equals four, down to one do. Well, we had to do so if we run that it says what, four three two one and well that's basically how you loop down now you can't switch these around it doesn't work like that uh, you can also not uh, do this for example four four two one do also doesn't work it's uh, one way only so for looping up you have to use two for looping down you have to use down two now another type of loop is the while loop. Basically this means um, that the loop will loop through your code while a statement is true. So we're going to try that while i equals, no, let's try something else. While i is smaller than five, do we can put the begin end block here do right line i. Now we're going to initialize that with one. So uh, right now it's always smaller than five. So if I press play, well run, it, it keeps writing one. What we want to do is modify the value. So there's I want to increase value so at a certain point it'll will it will go over the five. So there's two ways of doing that. Either we uh, take this approach, so i equals i plus one. So every time it loops, it will add one to i. And as you can see, it loops up one, two, three, four, then stops because when, uh, when this is four, so it writes out four here, next it'll add one to that. It loops back up to the top here and it checks oh i equals five so it's not no longer smaller than five so it exits the loop and it ends up here so it ends up here like that so that's a while loop now you can also increment this using the inc uh, function and that basically adds one to the i so run that we get the same result there's also inc x 
which is the extended version, which allows you to increment in uh, with a larger number than one. So in this case, it'll, it'll increment from one to three and then to five. So it should just write out one, three. So as you can see, one, three. Okay, so that's a while loop. Now, there's another type of loop, which is the repeat loop. Now, basically what repeat does is it will repeat a piece of code until a statement is true. Now, the uh, difference with while is also that this does not use a, uh, never uses a begin-end block. So, in this case, for example, you can remove that and you're still looping. But with repeat, you're going to do it like this. So, uh, you basically repeat until um, value is true. So repeat until I'm going to put i equals five in here. So in this case, write line i. But uh, also note that this is basically like a begin end block, so you can put multiple lines in between this. So write line i. This will keep looping because we don't change the i. Now if we increment i one step every time it repeats here. When it reaches five, it will exit the loop, and as before, uh, it will end up right here. So that's basically it for loops. Now, there is one more type of loop, but basically, it is not advised to use it, this at all. Most uh, programmers think this is a horrible code construct and should never be used. I personally think it's. Uh, it can be useful at times. It's basically using labels. Now, I do discourage using this unless you absolutely have no other choice. But you can also use this to construct loops. Basically, what you do is you make a label. So, uh, for example, we'll call it uh, L1. And basically, a label is a uh, certain point in your code which you can specify. So I'm going to remove that loop, and I'm going to put the label up here, so L1. And this basically means that the label points to this uh, position in the code. Now, the next thing we'll want to do is uh, to our right line here. And then we have to use a conditional statement to uh, to do this loop. So you basically have to do all of the work that the uh, normal looping operator do for you yourself. So I'm going to check if i is smaller than 5, then go to L1. So basically what you're telling it is if i is smaller than 5, you have to, instead of going past this and ending up here, so instead of ending up here, you have to jump back to L1. So if it's not uh, smaller than 5, it will just end up here. So if I run this, it will keep printing out 5, uh, 1, yes. And we can basically do the same thing here. So this is basically, well, here, this is the body of our loop. So basically, this represents a begin end block in the while loop, for example. Um, because this is actually, this is a construct, uh, like it's built right now, this is basically a construct of a while loop. And you can uh, add the incrementation here. And it'll just print out 1, 2, 3, 4 here. So as you can see, 1, 2, 3, 4 here. So it basically increments here. So if it's 1, it becomes 2. Check 0, it's smaller than 5. Jumps back to L1. Continues, writes it out, increments to 3, and so on. When it reaches 5 here, I'll check here. Oh, it's 5. OK, so don't do that and go to here. So that's basically it for labels. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you next time.